everyone, it's Nicole from Age Alliance. Today I am here with Nikki and Em. And these are the two studio managers of Queens of Pole. Um, they manage Borma, which is where we are at the moment. Um, and also Helen's Vale. So if you guys are in the area, definitely check them out. I'm going to have a chat to them today about basically everything relating to Pole and how it interacts with Boudoir and about themselves as well. So we will have a bit of a chat to them. But first, I will introduce them. So, Nikki over here has been, if my research is correct, doing polls since 2014. About 20 yeah. yeah. <laughs> this has been doing that and has been with Gnomes, who is the owner of Queens of the Pole since around 2017 as well. Yeah. <laughs> about that. After that, yeah. Well, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, unfortunately, Gnome's not here today, she's the Queen of Queens, um, but we do have these two lovely ladies here. So, Nikki is very much known as the Honk Queen. She has done many competitions, <laughs> a few of them that I have seen as well, which is an amazing performer. I'm not going to list through all of your winnings <laughs> because we will be here for maybe like two hours. Um, so, I'll just do the recent ones, but just trust me that she's done very well. Um, so the recent ones that I have down here is the Miss Pole Dance Queensland Amateur in 2022. Yeah, that one. Um, and then I have down here the Wall Play Queensland Semi Pro winner in 2022. But we did it this year as well in the Pro Division and placed first in that. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and we had Nico and Porter there as well. So lost my voice. But yeah, so um, I'm going to stop at those three. For now, but rest assured, she is amazing. And we have M as well, or M and May. <laughs> um, so she, if you remember her, did come to the masquerade ball if you were there, and was the twerk competition winner. Uh, so anyone, comment down below if you remember seeing M there shaking it on stage. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you do it for real good. Oh, yes. <laughs> So we did that in a few starter and poll around back in 2014 as well. Yes, yes. 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 definitely 2014. Definitely 2014. Yeah. And yeah, and it has to be here at Queen's Poll for a little while now as well. Um, she's currently studying a, it's an exercise technology degree at the moment. So she will be a poll instructor and a physio as well in coming years, which is very exciting. Um, so, and as well, has not, to my knowledge, competed in external competitions yet, no? Yet. But, yet, <laughs> yet, go get there. Also a brilliant performer, so, yeah, encourage her in the comments. Um, but she has placed in a lot of the in-house competitions, so Queen's Poll also does their Queen's Comp um, every year, where the students come in and compete, and some of the instructors as well, um, and has definitely done amazing in those too. Um, also, if you have been to Echo classes, you may also know that she is the creator of Spready Split Soul, which is Split's flexibility. Um, she's incredible at that. I might make a little demonstration later, but we'll see. Um, and she's also the queen of handstands, um, which is impressive. Check out her Instagram. She is <laughs> crazy. She can hold me up when I do a handstand, but she can just like up there. So maybe, maybe if we get her in for a big last session, she can do some handstands and create some poses that yeah. maybe some people could do as well. <laughs> so the beloved question everyone loves being asked, <laughs> tell me about yourself. Who are you? Who wants to go first? <laughs> You're up, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Emily? Uh, she is Loki Batchikin. That's what I like to say. <laughs> Anytime I do this in classes, I'm like, hi, I'm Emily, I'm the loud one. <laughs> um, which is really funny because outside of poll, I'm actually the quiet one, doesn't do social, doesn't do events. Yeah, does not. As soon as I come to poll, it's like switch, change. I'm around all the poll girls. Yeah. And just, yeah, loud M comes out. It was, it was amazing. Um, her class and everything are always a lot of fun. She's really good at choreo and she's a amazing person as well and yeah she's always very supportive you know, smart queen so that's uh, a little bit about Emma that you um who am I I feel like you go the same thing like when I'm introducing myself in a class setting I'm always the inappropriate one <laughs> <laughs> Get on that. um but very much the same outside of the poll I am 
very much like introverted. I yeah don't really go to too many social events apart from my close friend circle. Um, yeah, but I come into my space here and it's just, I don't know, I can be 100% true myself. Um, I'm around all of my queens and yeah, this new version of myself kind of comes out yeah. and I feel confident and sassy and yeah, always saying the most inappropriate things. <laughs> <laughs> I adore that. So when we talk about the queens as well, um, obviously queens in poll, um, but as you guys are the major life divas, these guys have their queens, which Makes sense. Appropriate. <laughs> so, being in the pole industry, do you guys find that in amongst, quote again, normal society, do you find that there's still a bit of a stigma around pole? And if there is, how do you deal with it? 100%. Yeah, 100%. Like, even some of the girls coming in for trial classes, they obviously think they're coming in here to learn how to strip. Yeah. Um, and some people want to come and learn that. And that's like totally fine as well. Um, but I feel like outside of the studio, especially, um, from my experience, talking to people about what I do, what my job is, um, especially like friends or family that I haven't seen in a long time, they're like, oh, you're a pole dancer, so you're a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, there's a whole other world <laughs> <don't know. laughs> aspect of it, but it is not me. Yeah, well, like, and what if I was? Like, there's nothing wrong with that either, but exactly. Yeah, um, there's definitely still that stigma. I feel like, for me especially, I really like to pay tribute to where our industry came from. So when I do have someone saying that, like, look, if it wasn't for strippers and um, exotic dancers, we wouldn't have our industry. So yeah. amazing. And me personally, when I first started pole, that was the like thing that hooked me was yeah. getting to know my inner feminine side, feeling sexy, doing body roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. that was the fun part for me. And like, yeah. that's not okay. Uh, it's, it's fine if that's not for everyone, but. Yeah, I think that's it's always good to pay tribute to it. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Because when um, so those who don't know, I mention every now and again that I taught for a little while. I actually guest instructed here for a term doing twerk as well, yeah. which is very interesting for me. This is like, why I want to come. Yeah, <laughs> this is my college. I my dress was too tight on the night, so I sent her up. And uh, but yeah, and I did that, and you know, I my parents don't care about me working in the boudoir industry, about all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it was very convenient going home for Christmas and well, apparently they told the rest of my family. <laughs> because everyone was just like, oh, so you're going to teach dance? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, though. And I'm like, yeah, that's like, because I do stuff sometimes with pole and stuff. And yeah. For, it's fitness and pole fitness yeah. rather than pole dance. Um, I don't know how to talk around the fact that I talk people shake their ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was fine. But they were fine with it, which was, I don't yeah. see. But yes, yeah, so you think it's that stigma. Yeah, I think it's the same sort of stuff, like remembering where it all came from. I have like a little bit of a different side now, obviously with my studies. So I full-time work through Paul and Nikki. So at my job, not as much. It's more so what the students are feeling and how they perceive it when they come in, particularly the newer students. Mm -hmm. But outside, I don't really have to interact with too many people who might judge because if they do I'm like bye yeah. <laughs> but at like uni obviously a part of why I want to study what I'm studying is for pole and for a lot of the girls so that they can be injury free and learn that they don't have to pole with pain 24-7 yeah. uh, so I found like the interactions with very highly esteemed academics and I just walk in and I'm like, yeah, cool, I'm a pole dancer. I want to use this to help pole dancers. Yeah. yeah. And they're all just like, uh, uh what? <laughs> like, how do we approach it? Okay. <laughs> good though, because I have been able to kind of like explain to people, like, all of this stuff is really important for us. Yeah. What we do is really hard. Yeah. So get on board. <laughs> I think that's one of the interesting things because. I mean, before I started, I was definitely kind of on the same mindset where I was like, oh, it's like, it's like whole day scandalous and everything. But then when I started, I found that when I mentioned uh, what I kind of did pole a lot more like full time day to day, yeah. the, the response from people tended to be a bit more, oh, you must have a lot of core strength. Yeah. Instead of just like, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is good. So I think there's yeah. a little progression. Definitely the, like the odds, the amount of times when you say it and people are like, holy heck, like that's amazing, that seems really hard compared to people giving you that look up and down. Yeah. It's definitely swaying much more to the side of 
holy crap, like don't you? Yeah. So that's Especially since it's going into the more mainstream, like um, Christy Sellers doing America's Got Talent and Australia's Got Talent. Yeah. Um, so it's never like equals Christy Sellers, yeah. Australia's Got Talent, America's, America's Got Talent. So Both. She, she won Australia's Got Talent and I think she came third. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Search on YouTube, it's insane. Yeah. yeah. But I think ever since that, especially, mm-hmm. um, and people have literally seen it in mainstream TV, yeah. they're like, oh, okay, so what they do isn't just grinding. Like, yes. yeah, there is yeah, some form of like sport and yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah. So, have you found it, given the stigma that still lies around a little bit, have you found it difficult to get new students to come on board and try it regardless of that? I'd say not necessarily. I think sometimes you get people who are coming just for a trial for the novelty of it and yeah. it's kind of obvious yeah. and they have like no real intention of like pushing further. We still get same thing, some of those people that then do it once and they're like, oh wait, no, this is like yeah, this better is than exactly I thought. Yeah. Like, so there's some people that like hate parties and stuff. Yes. Well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just for like, it's a shit for kids. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then they're like, wait, this is really fun. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. I think it's probably just more like respecting and knowing like certain students that don't want to be in videos mm. and posted on social media because yes. whether or not some of them it's just because of their work situation and they actually can't because yeah. of their work and others you kind of get the vibe that they just don't want that out there yeah. that they're doing it. Not even for like a oh no I can't be exposed. Like, yeah. exposed. Yeah. But like they just don't want hmm. anyone in their personal life to be like, yeah. oh, you're a pole dancer. Yeah. yeah. So it's probably more on that end. They yeah. have a little phrase that we use that consent is sexy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So even if they're filming themselves on their own devices to ask people that's behind them in the videos, yeah. like, yeah, ask them if they want to be blurred out or if you know they yeah. don't mind going to the next poll, whatever, so they're not yeah. seeing on. Yeah, if they don't mind at all, then that's fine. And some people are like, just don't tag me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I think that has a lot of crossover with boudoir as well, because yeah. we do have a lot of people. The main question when I like to research into stuff is, will my photos and your is there? Yeah. We're always worried about that. And again, it's one of those things where boudoir and bowl are both, I kind of, like, I think, kind of in that aspect of society where it's like, it's not that scandalous, but some people still find it to be a little bit. And yeah, yeah obviously, with work and everything. So, yeah, we have. The same in a similar sense where we've got like tiers of like releases where it's like no one sees it. Yeah. Um, it goes into the group, which is a private group, ladies only, all that sort of stuff. Or if people are just like, I don't care, post it. That would be me. Send it there. Don't like it, don't look. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely think that like amongst the industry and so like heavily ingrained in it as we are. I feel like I'm may have gotten a skewed sense of what people think is appropriate. Yeah. Because I'm like, <laughs> full direct booty shot straight on the internet. What's up with that? <laughs> Sunday. Yeah. That's, that's our Sunday pop day. Like, <laughs> so I think like, I've had moments where I've done stuff like that. I'm like, would other people feel like this is too much? Yeah. Yeah. I immediately go, don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly that. Don't like it. Don't look like it. 